The Pico name in, in Los Angeles is very popular. I'm the seventh generation here in Pio Pico. Many generations ago, my great-grandfather was the last Mexican governor of California. Rich history here in LA, and at the end of the day, I mean, family is, it's basically what you live for, is family. For me, the one of the best people to hang out with is my brother. I, I get to hang out with them all day. I have the best job in the world, hang out with this dude, oversee his training. It's pretty special what we have. I trust my brother so much. He's gonna tell me, hey, you didn't look very good today. I mean, this is what you need to work on. And man, you look great today. And to have somebody there to be honest with you, it's really cool for me. We're on our way to, to Unbreakable Gym with Jake Laser. I feel it's gonna be a fun interview. Being consistent, having a routine. My dad, my mom, everybody in my family, my grandpa, a great team behind me. It makes it that much easier to take on these tough guys that I have to fight. And we're ready to take on anybody in the world. My whole goal, honestly, is to be the champion for a long time. Becoming a champion is one thing, but staying a champion is another. Being unbreakable is a choice. I know what my choice is. Oh, the prodigy is here. How's it going, Jay? What's going on, brother? How's everything? How you doing? Hey, Aaron Pico, everybody. Aaron Pico, give him a little love. Hey, hey. There we go. You and I, we're going to do the hard stuff first, which is talking. <laughs> and then we're going to train. That's the easy part, just a little bit. And we'll get some recovery with you. Good? Sounds like a plan Good. to me. I like it, buddy. Let's do it. No shoes on the map, Pico. You know that. Oh, yeah, of course. So you walked in the gym. I introduced you to everybody as the prodigy. Do you realize that you're a prodigy? You know, I, one thing that someone's always told me is don't apologize for winning. I like that, man. Yeah. It's like, hey, it ain't bragging if it's true. I used to get really, really uncomfortable talking about what I want, and a good strength coach of mine told me, don't apologize for winning. Right. You know, you can't apologize. So once he said that, I, I feel comfortable saying that. Well, there's a reason why you're called a prodigy. Can you rip through your accolades for me here, starting earliest to now? The boxing was the Junior Golden Gloves. The national champ? National champion, How old you? 11 years old. Okay, keep going. I won a European championship for pancreation. How old were you there? 13, I won a world championship in wrestling. Okay, how old were you there? I was 16. You know what I was doing when I was 16? I was running for the police, getting arrested in the Jersey Shore. I wasn't doing all this stuff. Man, you're different, you're different. There's a lot of champions out there. When did you realize and what got you to know that I'm, I might be different than everybody else? To be honest with you, Jay, I mean, I remember like it was yesterday. I was sitting in class in third grade and I was kind of weird. I said, what am I gonna do when I'm older? Like, how am I gonna make money? And I said, I'm gonna be a fighter. I wanna be a fighter. I stuck to it and here I am today. Do you remember the first time you got punched in the face? I do. I was sparring at La Habra Boxing Club. How old were you? I was 10, actually. 10 years yeah, old? Yeah, I was 10. Okay. I got you realize that's not normal, right? That, yeah, that is not okay, normal, good. yeah. I got addicted to it. I was like, I'm gonna become better at boxing. And I was obsessed with it. I was in the boxing club so much that, that they thought my dad was pushing me to box. I'm like, no, guys, I want to box. I want to spar. I think Freddie Roach saw at an early age that you're different. Yeah, there was, there was a documentary I watched of Freddie Roach, and one thing that I always stuck in my head was the reason why he has the gym open is because you never know when the next superstar was going to walk in. And I remember when I heard that, I turned to my mom, I said, that next superstar is going to be me. And I remember I walked through those doors, and some way, some, somehow, he said, hey, we can use some sparring for Miguel Cotto. Would you like to, to, to join in on the camp? The rest is history. I started training with Freddie, and my boxing has gone, has gone through the roof. Great boxer, obviously. But wrestling is what really got all of us to say, we need that guy in MMA. He is this prodigy, this this next level. Again, let's go over the wrestling accolades. Why don't you rail them off so you have them right? Yeah, I won the U.S. National like six times. I've won. Oh, he won the U.S. National Championships like six times. Yeah. Again, not normal. Go ahead. I was Olympic alternate at 18 years old. So at what point did you realize in wrestling, I may be the best in the world here? Honestly, when I won a world championship for the first time, I remember standing on the podium, hearing the national anthem. You didn't know before you had your hand raised? Like, you don't always have to have gold around your waist to know that you're different. You didn't know in your journey, like, most 16-year-olds aren't doing this. Honestly, my, my philosophy was, as a kid, it was just go to practice, work as hard as you possibly can, go wrestle and have fun. Hey, we've had A.J. McKeon here a bunch also, training with our, our Arnold Child, and you guys have known each other for years, and he's fighting right before you. When was the first time you guys kind of laid hands on each other and 
What's your friendship like? Yeah, the first time we met was uh, the wrestling. His dad, Antonio, was my coach, had a kids wrestling program, and we'd go a couple times a week to wrestle with him. It's something that we used to always talk about as kids. It's like, man, I can't wait till you're on TV fighting and see us actually doing great things in the, in the fight game is uh, it's pretty special. Where did you get the, the greatness bug, if you will? It's just simple, I, I love to win. When you go out and win a wrestling tournament, the feeling that you get afterwards was just the best feeling that you could possibly get. I hate to lose, I mean, that's right. just a big... A lot of us hate to lose, and we don't have the accolades you do. What's behind your rib cage that makes you different? I don't know. Really? I, I really don't know. I couldn't tell you. My, my, my philosophy is, is do what you love, Everything else will take care of itself. I, I go to practice. I just make sure I'm the hardest worker in the room. Go out and compete. You didn't make the Olympics by basically criteria in a tie. 4-4. Four, 4-4. Four. Four, four. I was about to say, for a guy who hates to lose, does that still stick with you? I don't really have to ask the question. I don't agree with it. It is what it is, but... Uh, it's yeah. three or four years ago, and it's still pissing me off. The Olympic Games is the biggest tournament you can possibly and to be like cut out of it because you lost 4-4. Four to four. It's kind of absurd to me. You then make the foray into MMA. Man, yeah, I try and tell our football players here all the time, guys like, hey, it's one thing run out on the football field, but there is no crazier walk on the planet than walking by yourself into that cage. Your first night gave you your first loss. A, are you over that? And, and B, what'd you learn from that? I remember it like it was yesterday. I, mean, I remember making the walk. I remember Stitch putting Vaseline on me, saying, welcome to the big time in Madison Square Garden. I was. To be honest with you, I was fine. You know, get hit with that uppercut, the lights are going. I mean, it's it's a whole different ball game. But what I learned from it is just, just be patient, take your time. I have 15 minutes. I'm so used to wrestling and just getting the guy tired, going crazy. But I need to just take my time, use my skills, stay relaxed. My last three fights, that's what I've done, right. and it's been first round knockouts. Our gym here is called Unbreakable because everybody in here, we try and push their breaking point and push their breaking point. And you could use your Unbreakable mentality outside these doors as well. What makes you Unbreakable? Well, I think Unbreakable is, is a choice. There's a choice you have to make that saying, you know what, I'm gonna look straight at it and I'm gonna keep going. Just like my first fight, I could have just said, ah, this is not for me, but no, I made a choice. No, I'm gonna come back stronger. I'm gonna ultimately be Unbreakable. Your last three fights, first round knockout, left hook. Pico beginning oh! And two body shots, liver shots, right? Is that the favorite thing for you to finish somebody with? Yeah, it seems to be. <laughs> <laughs> it seems to be. And another knockout for Aaron Pico! I, I think one of the other great things about your style is you are well-rounded, so high-level wrestler, high-level boxer, are already done MMA and pancreation. One of the rare few who ever starts at a high level in all of it. Yeah, the way that, that MMA is evolving is just it's just so crazy. I mean, I, when I'm 35 years old, there's gonna be a kid. There's a kid right now training. To take my head off. So, like there was a, there's a kid training like how I was training. So the way that MMA is evolving, there's there's no way you can just be a wrestler nowadays. But that's what makes fighting so beautiful. Did you just tell me you're still gonna be doing this at 35 years of age? I hope so. I hope so. What I, I mean? I finally found something that's wrong with you. There it is, right there. I, yeah, you're nuts. I hope so. <laughs> I've, I've thought about it like, man, that's going to be a crazy day. I've done this since I was three and a half. I mean, I couldn't even tie my shoes when I first went into wrestling practice. So I hope I can fight as long as I can and, and, and get out when I when the right time is and, and live my life. Well, it's not today, brother, because you and I are going to train a little bit. Let's go be unbreakable. Let's do it. Key to battle, you just have to let your body take over. The way I approach this game is every fight is a world championship.